this chair almost leaned back. I thought it was going to fall off. The chair does feel like that. The chair does feel like that. Hey, everyone. Good morning. Morning. Sitting on the suburban balcony. Yes, we started having a chat today, this morning, talking about masks. Ooh, <laughs> I burped. Yeah, we're talking a lot about masks and stuff because, you know, we're just coming back into my family's setting. So we're having to navigate a lot of, a lot of different understandings of the world today. And um, masks, masks are a thing. Um, I'm seeing, I'm seeing in the news now. A lot of municipalities are mandating mask wearing in, in indoors in, in institutions and in buildings. Toronto Council just voted to make it mandatory as of July seventh, I think. I know it's it's mandatory in Kingston. A number of other of other townships in Ontario and uh, this is actually enforceable with a fine of up to a thousand dollars 750 to a thousand dollars it's not confirmed yet but that's what they think it's going to be which means that yeah you can you can pay a big bill, you can, you can get in trouble for, for not wearing a mask. You can really can get in trouble. It cost you heavily. So what does that mean for us? What does that mean for us as a society? I think there's two points to talk about here. I mean, one is are mass effective and you know at preventing the spread of disease and and that's not really the, the point that I'm interested in talking about right now because the other point I see is is it important enough to restrict what people are allowed to do legally in order to provide a sense of safety for them, a sense of security for them. Because what, what these laws are doing are, are restricting your freedom to wear what you want, be in public how you are. They're making you comply with a rule um, for this greater cause and uh, on one hand you can argue that wearing masks is good for everyone which is fine if you think that um, but I think it's becoming an issue when we're, we're making it into law like when it's an education campaign and okay everyone's in it for everyone that's all well and good I'm not going to argue too strongly against that um, but when it's made into law, I think we're getting into dangerous territory. What do you think? I agree. And I think I love how you were really speaking about this in a way that we're really being clear on why we're, why we're talking about this. We're talking about like the dangers and what that means by making it a legislation. Mm -hmm. And I would like us to talk about those dangers. Yeah. I mean, that's important because I think it's not, I don't think that we can all see those dangers. I feel like we just became aware of the dangers yesterday ourselves. Well, not yesterday, but like it just became really apparent yesterday. It really showed up. Because we were at a on-route stop, and 
We were walking towards the on route to get in, and a woman came up to us, another patron, and was like, you can't go in unless you have a mask. And we were like, okay, like, we believe that we're fine, but okay, fine, if we're gonna just comply just to, like, be allowed in. If that's what it takes to be let in, to use the bathroom. We'll just do it. So we go in, we do it, I have a mask on, it's friggin' old, it's droopy as fuck. Oops. <laughs> and it's just like, whatever, like, the baggiest panty on my face. Um, Michael's is like a reused thing, whatever. Okay, so now we're allowed in. And I get out of the bathroom, and this woman looks at me, and she's like, that's a thick mask. And I was like, about to be like, yeah, you know, I got it in Korea, it's legit, it's great. Like, I thought that's what she was saying to me, and she's like, you know, oh, wait, what did she say? Oh, it was so, oh, how she said it, the next thing she said essentially was just like, you know the particles, like, don't even fit through, the, like, the particles are a lot smaller than the particles, than the holes on your, on your thick mask and I was like yeah you know I just wore it to like be able to get in and she's like so you don't even believe in it and you're wearing it and she's like you can't do that anymore like we this is much bigger than just like this one choice to comply it's about like it's about our future like if you don't believe in it stand in that like be that we need, we need that. We need all of us to be what we believe in. Mm -hmm. We can't just go along because, because then we'll go along and then we'll end up somewhere and be like, wait, what? Wait, what is this world? Why are we here? I never agreed to come here. And you're like, yeah, you did, because you complied with each step that led to this moment in the end without knowing the magnitude of like every moment we betray ourselves like every moment we're like all right not really believing this but fine i'll just do this not really believing this but fine it's not such a big step to take it's okay and then what happens when they make the next rule and the next rule you know they're just taking us further steps so further in the direction of restricted freedom restricted ability to do as you feel feel okay to do and uh, and what this one was really talking about was our complacency to the rule like okay we will follow along and how long are we going to follow along for how many rules are we going to follow along for that we don't believe and you know one one is like us just not wanting to make a kerfuffle about it but you know the other is the people who are really complacent to the restrictions happening to them because they were distracted by the scary thing that's over here that everyone that the messaging is saying this is scary where's the messaging that's you know cautioning us about restricting our giving up our freedoms like allowing our freedoms to be written away in laws for how long like are those going to be effective for they don't have an expiry date they have to be intentionally removed so that's a good point who's going to intentionally remove them right like once it's you know it's it's okay to put it put that law in because people are afraid but then what politician's going to stand up and be like we need to remove this law well everyone that's afraid of removing protective laws is going to stand up and 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 yell at them, and then their politician's going to lose all the popularity. So they're not going to go through with removing things that are for safety. Who wants to go against safety? There's no, there's no politician that has the guts to say, "We don't need this. It's overkill." When there's someone else saying, "You can't take that away. It's for our safety," and then. Who's going to argue with that? People are going to stand behind, like, yeah, our safety, this is a bad person, bad politician, don't remove that law. This is just an example of what could happen, and what often does happen, like, no one's going to, no, no, no political career is safe when you're trying to take away things that are for safety, even if it's for increased freedom.
And that's the thing, like the definition of safety has been so externalized, is that we're looking at mm. these bills, we're looking at these tests and, and these masks to, in order to feel safe. When the truth is, it's like those masks, those bills, those procedures aren't your front line. That's not what keeps you safe. Like, even when you think about it, what keeps you safe? That bill that's over there wherever isn't keeping you safe. You. You. We have measures inside of us that keep us safe, and they've been ignored and downplayed and suppressed. And then... Then we just were like, oh, yeah, I'm powerless. I need this thing to feel safe. When it's like, what about your immune system? You know, what about your practices that can help cleanse you energetically? And also, like, that energetic cleansing also cleanse, like, bacteria and viral and all of those things. It's like hygiene, a different level, a different sort. Like, there's a lot of things that we can do to protect mm -hmm. ourselves and to heal ourselves even if you get it, mm -hmm. and that's not spoken about. We can focus a lot more on the internal practices and the internal safety rather than looking for the external external barriers to between us and danger and, and looking for those to save us from danger and being safe because we've got the, the walls, the castle walls around us. When we can, we have the power to create strength and, and safety from within. So this is another example of turning in versus turning out. And I feel like we're really getting more, I think more of us are waking up to that fact, like whether or not we're fully aware of it yet. There's like a feeling emerging of like, there's something else. Like, I can't live my life in a constant state of stress. I can't live my life trying to foresee every place I can and may get a virus. Like, I think many people are realizing that, like, living in that space of constant stress is unattainable. It's, un it's impossible. It's, it's unhealthy, and it's, it's dangerous. And I think many people are realizing that, like, wow, I can't control life and death as much as I want to. Mm. Well, yeah, I can't control life, life and death. I can't control when death comes on. My doorstep, their doorstep, I can't do that. Like, literally. But what I can do is come back to my peace. Like, what I can do is if I'm feeling stress, I can alleviate my stress. I can begin to acknowledge the source of my stress or even maybe not even know the source, but know that like I'm safe in this moment. Practice regulating your nervous system, bringing down your stress. Because stress puts you in a lot of risk. It puts you in harm's way, it reduces your capacity to protect yourself. It reduces your immune system. It reduces your cognitive capacities. Meaning you can't see straight. You can't think. You can't see what's really there. You're just reacting like, oh my gosh, this thing, oh my gosh, this thing's going to get me. This thing's going to get me. Like. Stress has a hugely detrimental effect on all of our processes as, as human beings. And I want to point at this object of control again to finish, I think, my my whole point. The people in our society that advocate for safety in a loud way, that, that demand politicians give it to us, that demand that the external world is set up in such a way that it controls dangers. Can, they're trying to control the external world to keep themselves safe. They speak about this loudly and unabashedly, yet far fewer of us are willing to speak up about protecting our freedom in the same, with the same enthusiasm. Like, as if freedom is not a, a, a widely accepted value. 
but I think it is. But another piece of complacency there is that most of us haven't lived without freedom, without the freedom that we're used to. Some of us have, some of us have moved from other places, some of us have history where we haven't been free, where we've been very constricted, prosecuted, and they will know how important freedom is and why it's important to protect it, why it's desirable to come to our country, to, to this country, to be in a place of freedom. And they know that freedom is super valuable and worth protecting, but those of us who are used to having it, we might not think about it as much, but I think we should. We're going to allow people without criticism to be advocating loudly for safety. We should also have support for people advocating for our freedom or non-restricted access to our choice. Freedom to choose what we will do. Because when you're in your power, you know how to choose for your own good and also for the greater good. When you're fully in your power and you see things clearly, we make choices not just for ourselves, we make them based on all of the information, all the people around us. So I just want to advocate for our freedom of choice. We don't need to be coerced and, and threatened with fines, with jail, to act in the greater service of our health and our family's health and our community's health. We don't need to be threatened. We need to be supported to do that. We don't need to be restricted in order to do that. We need actually more freedom so that we can do that. More freedom to protect ourselves. Like you said, times a trillion million, infinity. <laughs> Michael, wow. I'm going to be posting that quote everywhere. I hope you guys really took that in because that's that's why we came here. Just for that exact point that Michael just said. Like we don't need to be coerced to what is it, do the right thing? Essentially. <laughs> We will do the right thing. We will do the right thing. Haven't you, hasn't anyone felt that who's tuning in? Like, when, like, you know, you know the thing to do in service of yourself and all around, but when someone tries to force you to do it, you don't? <laughs> it feels somehow distasteful. But when you have the freedom to rise and to choose and to see and to choose, based on all of the factors, and you have that space and freedom, you show up. It's more powerful. You take your actions with power. Because it's coming from choice. It's coming from inside you. You're like, yes. yes. I'm doing this. Not like, oh man, shit, I, I better do that, otherwise I'm going to get in trouble. I'm in trouble. Woo! Well, I'm burning up. So, I like to close this video mm -hmm. and let us know what you think. Let us know, like, what touched you, what, 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 how would you say this? What do you value in this discussion? What do you value in this discussion? We'd love to hear from you. Um, we're going to keep doing these because we think it's really important. Um, Michael said today, it isn't enough for us to just not wear masks. It's about having these conversations and, and talking about freedom as much as we're talking about safety, as he said. Mm -hmm. Share what we see so 
or maybe you will see it too. Or maybe you see something you don't see. Share that. And that's good too. Mm-hmm. All right, folks. Until next time. Happy Canada Day. <laughs> I was going to say that. But also remember the indigenous people that we displaced in order to build this country. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Thank you for that reminder. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Much love.